So when we talk about mind speak, a lot of people get really tripped up on that and they have trouble understanding the mechanical function of how that works. And, you know, our brains are selves. We are nothing more than transmitters and receivers of frequencies of energies of all of energy. that in our mm -hmm. pineal gland especially. Welcome back to Arkansas Bigfoot, everybody. Great to see you today. Well, we went from having a month of solid rain and flash floods to mid-90s and just horrible humidity. And we're on our way back to the new gifting spots and kind of look at some of this area as we're moving around here might have to make the transition to the night shift if this heat keeps up like this. These guys tend to lay up during the daytime and don't really get active till dark when it's this hot and muggy outside. Now let's get on with the walk and see what we see today. I'm glad for a little sunshine. It definitely was a shock from mid 70s to mid 90s. Anyway, we're up here on the higher side of the woods. All of that bottom area got completely flooded out. It had at places two, two and a half feet of water. A lot of the stuff that was around that first gifting tree, I think the creek must have carried some of it away. I was looking at it the other day and that wooden box and some other things were gone. They're probably in a brush pile down the creek somewhere that I just haven't found yet. Yeah. This 
see that on the ground over there. That old air mattress from God two years ago. Where that? <laughs> what? Your cowbell pants. Your Cowbell went to <laughs> old pair of pants and that air mattress. Somebody's little spot. All right. See if I see anything else here. Just that little peanut butter cup. make our way around to that nursery area where we left all that stuff last time. It's kind of like following a breadcrumb trail and see where they've carried stuff off. There's a baggie laying over there. We'll get that picked up and put in the bucket here in a minute. You can see the slope of the land, how all that goes up to higher ground back in through there. Which is why we're leaving the treats and stuff back here right now. That lower end is just completely full of mud and mosquitoes. Now it's tore in half. Somebody has a shoe finish. I don't see, other than that little baggie back there, I don't see anything. Well, maybe there's another one over there. She was up here, but the other piece wasn't there. No. There's the bones. Oh, look. Now you got a rock. Oh, wow. That's a nice piece of quartz. You know where that came from, don't you? Hmm. Probably over there in that grove area, that big pile of quartz oh. laying over there. That's the only place I know to have any quartz. Or at least up above where we can find it. So here's part of another baggy laying here. It's completely ripped open. Oh, 
I guess that I guess that means they liked what they got and liked where we left it. Alright, well we got a bunch of stuff to leave out here for them today, so give us a minute to set all this out and we'll be right back. Alright, so here's the lunch menu for today. Left to right we've got moon pies. There are sausages next to that. A bag of Cajun red beans and rice. Dried fruit chips and raisins. Big bag of lima beans. Got kipper snacks, sardines, oysters, apples, peanut butter, popcorn, and the bag with the rice cakes has uh, maple syrup on them. I got a special treat because I know Junior loves the eggs, but I've got a big bag full of quail eggs for him there. I think he'll like that. Well, I think we should go a little deeper back into this nursery area and see if we can find a second separate place to leave the other part of this today. And okay. understandable why they like this area back in here it's absolutely gorgeous even with all that heat it stays shaded and cool back here so. mm -hmm. What is, can you help over here on your left? Do we remember that? I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. stuff up somewhere close to here like maybe at the base of that tree sure through that way. A wide open one going out through there. Well, in a flat spot, maybe it's just a good another one. Sit. Yeah, another one headed out that direction. 
Alright, we're going to set this other stuff up right here and then we'll walk around and see what else we find. Alright, so pretty much more of the same right here. Got their kipper snacks, popcorn, sausages, beans and rice, sardines, apples, peanut butter, moon pies. Got the dried fruit and the rice cakes with maple syrup and a bag of lima beans. I think that'll give them something different to yeah. enjoy for a little bit. Some spice, high protein. I said usually when you find one, there's something else in close proximity to it. Looking around to see if I spot anything. Some of that gets pretty woolly back in there. Mm -hmm. Well, a little bigger. I would say that's been made that way. That doesn't look like it's a fall. It's pretty cool. Feeling the eyes. <laughs> and we're going to pull up a log on the trail here and visit with our little skinks. We'll watch the woods back off in the distance. It runs on like this for several miles out through that direction. Dense. Very dense. One of the things I wanted to talk about was the topic of mind speak. A lot of people get tripped up on that and don't understand or comprehend how it works. And realistically, it's something we've been exposed to all of our lifetimes, basically since, what, the early teens? Yeah. The invention of the radio and using quartz crystals and frequencies to transmit sound waves. Now your brain contains the pineal gland, and a healthy pineal gland has quartz crystals embedded in it and generates a, a electric field around it, so it's essentially a transmitter and a receiver. I think now they've proven that it's somewhat magnetic. And some people can pick up and feel off of what's going on in a room of other people around them. Some people can expand it to greater distances. It's kind of like an old AM station when you're turning the dial trying to find a clear radio signal and you come across one that's really strong and prevalent punching through and it'll bleed across two or three channels close to it 
and that's kind of the way some of the mind speak works. If it's all based on frequency. If they're trying to communicate on you know such a high energy level, it bleeds through. You may be aware of it when it happens. You may dismiss it. it Usually, they're thoughts or things that are beyond what you're thinking about or beyond the way you normally would say something to yourself. You know, it's we're all habitual. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell the difference between your own thoughts that you have about something and then something just popping into your mind like a billboard message. It feels random, but it truly isn't. There actually is no such thing as random. But our ability to be that receiver or to have that antenna kind of primed and healthy. And it's a little bit like a muscle. The more you use it, the easier it gets. Some people even suffer headaches as that opens up temporarily. And everybody, just like the fingerprints, on their hands, they have their own unique energetic signature. Correct. And once those connections are made, they can differentiate between you or anybody else, just like reading a fingerprint. That's right. But because it's not something we're taught about, our tendency is to dismiss it. But how often have you thought of somebody and within a couple of days you hear from that person? I'm sure the same thing happens to people, you know, or they've said, oh, I was just thinking about you. Well, there it is. It's the same. It's, it's all based on frequency and connectivity. And the more we're able to connect with what's around us, I think is very key in that because the more separate we see things from ourselves the diff more I think the difficult, difficult yeah the difficult part of it is in understanding that connectivity more than anything else you know we've all heard the stories about a tragic event that has happened halfway across the world but the mother or the wife or the sister or the brother or whoever is aware of it whether it comes to them while they're asleep in a dream or whether they just have that sense or that knowing mm -hmm. and it's along those same lines it's that frequency communicating with you I honestly believe for mothers it's more than just the thought it's the fact that they've actually shared blood with that child and there's a part of them literally in that child that helps reinforce that connection. But anyway, I think it happens a lot more often to people out in the woods with these big guys than what they realize. I think it gets dismissed too often and too easily. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to say goodbye to our skinks and walk around for a little bit more. time of year we may have to transition a little bit more to the night shift because these guys tend to lay up and are extremely quiet through the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Very relaxed. Can't say I blame them, I'm kind of the same way. <laughs>
break. Sometimes walking back here is like that. It's like a breadcrumb trail. <laughs> Feathers seem to be the theme of the day. Okay. Didn't we have that in that That was the little For pin. the elemental? Yeah. <laughs> been over a year ago. Yeah, yeah. said that just runs on forever back there until it hits that big marsh so I think we're gonna leave it with you here for now appreciate you guys tagging along and we're gonna try to come out maybe next time of a late evening or mm -hmm. nighttime and see what happens when it's a little cooler temperatures you guys have a great day and we'll see you later okay. thanks <laughs>